Hello everyone, we're going back to school with Chief Meteorologist Lynette Charles today once again and today the topic is fog. So we do have lots of fog to talk about. I'm going to talk about six categories of fog and then we'll start to see uh, that this is the way that it develops and a lot of it develops. You have to have moisture, you have to have the cool air, the warm air, but let's delve into it shall we. So we'll start you out with that setup. So this is the one that we're dealing with. This one is called steam fog and the setup is the cold air mass moving over a warm warmer lake or a smaller body of water. You can see the warmer temperature at 58, that air temperature at 50, 49 rather, and it is colder. So that's one of the ingredients, if you will, that you need for that steam fog to develop. Also, what we're going to do next is the fact that you have to have evaporation. So evaporation is that water is going to evaporate, adding moisture to the air near the surface. So once again, it's going to add moisture to the air near the surface. Now that's going to be kind of kind of common uh, in all the fogs that we will be talking about. Next is warming. So the air just above the surface is warmed and the, by the water below. So again, the air right above the surface is warmed by the water below. And that's when we're going to start to see some of that fog form. And so with that, as moisture rises, water turns into vapor and it looks like steam. Voila, you're dealing with fog. So once again, that was a recap of uh, that type of fog. Now we're dealing with radiation fog. And radiation fog, I've talked about radiational cooling. That was one of my other weather segments to you guys. Radiational cooling. Again, remember when all the heat escapes right back into the atmosphere? Well, this is kind of the setup when you're dealing with radiation fog. Daytime heat leaving the ground, clear night with clear with light winds, I should say, with the light winds. And that's the exact same setup for, again, that radiational cooling. Then we look at the moisture. Remember how we had moisture at the ground for the last one as well? So you have that thin layer of moisture underneath the drier air, and the rising air from the surface passes quickly through the moist air. So it put, passes quickly through the moist air. And then you have cooling. So the moist layer does not absorb much heat. And with that, the air near the surface cools a lot quicker. And then once again, voila, you have your fog. As moisture rises, water turns into vapor and the fog forms. Now remember, fog is just a big cloud at the ground, basically. So next we have our upslope fog, okay? So the upslope fog, of course, you're going to be talking about mountainous regions or uh, something that's quite higher. So the cold air mass located over the lower elevations. So the lower elevations, that's where you're going to be talking about where the cold air is pretty much trapped across the area. So then that cold air starts to lift up the slope of the mountain. So with that, that cold air uh, starts to become even colder across that area. And with that, once again, you're going to have that moist layer. We're talking, anytime we're talking about the fog, you have to have some type of moist layer. So, so you have that saturation, the moist layer of air forms on the slope of the mountain. And guess what's next? Voila, you have your fog. As moisture rises, the water turns into vapor, and of course, that fog forms. Our next one is precipitation fog, okay? So the setup for this one is you have the warm air mass moving in above the surface during rainy conditions, okay? So it's already raining and you have the warm air moving in. Then what's next? Of course, you're gonna have to have evaporation. So the rain drops become warmer as they pass through a warm layer and then the warm rain drops evaporate into the cool, cooler layer near the surface, okay? So once again, you're dealing with the cooler air near the surface as well. Next, we have the moisture. Again, the moist air, That of course, that's near the surface as well. The evaporation saturates the air Air close to the surface even after the rain moves out. So it's still going to be left, you're still dealing with some type of moisture even after that rain is long gone. And once again, the saturation of the air leads to the fog forming. Voila, you have your fog. And then we have two more to go. The next one is going to be advection fog. Now check this setup. So advection basically means um, movement, moving, um, the advecting of the air. So this is the advecting of the air um, onshore. So the setup is the onshore winds with cooler waters near the coast. Again, you have the cooler set up down off towards the bottom, right? And then, of course, you're going to have like the warmer air moving in as well. So this is what we have uh, as that setup. And then you have the moist air. Again, we have the moisture. A warmer, moist air mass moves over the cooler waters. That sounds familiar to the first one uh, that we talked about. And then we have the cooling. The warm air mass gets cooled by the water below. And the air cools, becoming saturated with moisture. And then once that happens, Voila, we do have the fog. Saturation of air 
fo uh, of air leads to fog forming. Our last one is very similar to what I just showed you, except this is called the advection fog, but it's inland. It oh, comes on land. So the setup is a strong breeze moving over cooler ground. Okay, so once again, we're still talking about warm air. We're talking about cooler air, and we also are going to have that moisture as well. This is what we have next, the moist air, a warmer moist air mass moving over the cooler surface. So very similar to what I just showed you uh, with just that plain advection fog. And then we have the warm air mass gets cooled by the ground below, and then the air cools becoming saturated with moisture. And then guess what happens? Yes, the saturation of the air leads to fog forming across the area. So basically that's what we're dealing with when we're talking about fog, all types of certain, uh, excuse me, all types of fog uh, that we can talk about. We've talked about six today and I want to bring that to your attention because we start these mornings, these cool mornings with that fog and just let you know that the air gets saturated and it just can't hold it anymore and voila, it forms that big cloud. So that is um, going back to school with Chief Meteorologist Lynette Charles and stay tuned for the next one next week with uh, Patrick Pete. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.